The South Korean economy recorded growth of 0.8% on quarter in the second quarter of this year, and it's largely expected to hit 4% growth in 2021, marking recovery from the pandemic. But with infection cases continuing to hike at unprecedented speed due to the spread of the Delta variant, along with rising household and national debt, there are questions over whether economic recovery and growth might be compromised. We speak to a distinguished Korean economist on his outlook for the world's ninth largest economy and whether the government's more than $500 billion budget plan next year will give it the boost it needs. Song and Henry Kim is the Dean and Professor of Economics at Songyongan University and the Editor-in-Chief of the International Economic Journal. Very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Suyong. It's a pleasure to join you this morning. Thank you. And well, Professor, now the, the Bank of Korea said last week that the South Korean economy grew 0.8% in the second quarter of this year. And that was uh, slightly up by a uh, 0.1 percentage point from their preliminary data. And there was a noticeable increase in private consumption, which has been quite sluggish for years. And well, do you expect this consumption recovery to continue this year? Uh, first of all, uh, even though 0.8% is a positive number, uh, it's not a high number in my opinion. Uh, GDP growth rate in the first quarter was 1.7%, and it recorded 2.2% in the third quarter of last year. And since then, it's been uh, declining, even though it's still positive. Uh, yes, you're right, the consumption played an important role, growing by 3.6% in the second quarter, leading to a positive GDP growth rate. Uh, will it continue? Um, maybe not, uh, mostly due to a stricter social distancing policy started in the summer. Now we've been in the fourth um, level for a while. So consumption may not um, grow at all in the third quarter. Uh, however, as more people are vaccinated, and social distancing policy may get uh, relaxed in the fourth quarter, together with um, government relief funds that are implemented um, right now. Consumption may uh, bounce back in the fourth quarter, hopefully. Still quite a toss up there that we're seeing. And well, uh, the central bank, uh, the central bank officials, they do seem quite optimistic, though, despite um, growth, as you said, having fallen for two quarters. And well, uh, fallen relatively, of course. And well, what is your projection for the country's economic growth this year? Do you think the Bank of Korea's 4% uh, forecast will be on point? Well, GDP, uh, GDP forecasting is uh, always a hard task, as there are so many uncertainties hitting the economy. My guess is that 4.0% GDP growth rate forecast is a reasonable number uh, that we can attain. Now, the economy should grow around 0.6% um, each um, of third and fourth quarter in order to meet the 4.0% goal. Um, as I said, it's, uh, I think it's plausible. Uh, even though the third quarter performance is expected to be weak, the fourth quarter would be better, um, hopefully, because of similar reasons that I mentioned before, uh, less strict social distancing policy, which uh, might boost up the consumption and even a new start of uh, with corona policy as more people are vaccinated. Uh, most of all, in the political uh, sense, the presidential election is next year. So uh, the government will be very active and, and implement all possible measures to meet the GDP growth rate goal, I believe. Well, as you mentioned, so the 0.8% increase isn't that great. Um, it actually put South Korea's growth rate in 12th place out of 15 OECD member countries, which includes the US, Germany, France and Italy. And the average was actually 2%. So how is South Korea doing um, compared to its OECD peers? I mean, what's the reason for the gap? Um, yes, the 12th out of 15 uh, does not sound like a good performance. Um, uh, one noticeable feature of the recovery from the current pandemic in general uh, is that developed countries uh, like the US and European countries show much better performance compared to the developing and emerging economies. This is mostly due to two factors. Um, first is the vaccination rate is much higher in developed countries. The second is that there is much more room for strong and aggressive uh, fiscal spending policy in developed countries. Korea did relatively better in the second criteria for fiscal spending, but not uh, the first one with vaccination rate. 
Uh, Korea performed uh, relatively better than others last year, um, as you know, everyone wore masks all the time, which stopped the widespread of virus before the Delta variant uh, appears. But wearing masks is not a cure-all. In order to uh, boost economic activities, especially in consumption, a high vaccination rate is essential. So hopefully uh, vaccine imports continue as planned and, and we can attain mass immunization by the end of November, as the government promised. I'm not sure. I mean, the new Delta uh, variant may delay the achievement deadline or even make it impossible to attain mass immunization. Well, exports have long been South Korea's cash cows, but they were down by 2% um, during the third quarter, during the sorry, second quarter. And there's concern that supply chain risks for major items such as semiconductors will further trim down the country's earnings from its outbound shipments. What is your outlook on this and how should we really prepare for external risks? Yes, the traditionally um, exports play the important role of main driver for economic recovery. Uh, one noticeable example was the 97 Asian currency crisis. And right after the crisis, the Korean economy bounced back right away because of uh, the recovery of the exports. Uh, however, as you mentioned that uh, this quarter, I mean, the second quarter exports were down by 2%. Uh, some people argue that it's because of base effect that exports recovered dramatically in the fourth quarter of last year and the first quarter of this year. So it's, it's about time that, that it slows down. Another uh, reason um, probably is global shortage of shipping containers. Uh, that might have hindered um, shipments of export goods in the, in the second quarter. Will, um, will exports recover this quarter? I hope so, but uh, maybe not because of slowdown in recovery in developed economies uh, due to Delta variants. Uh, last week, uh, the U.S. Uh, reported a new job number, um, which was much worse than the market expectation uh, because of the new spread of the uh, virus. And also, Chinese economy is also slowing down. Um, so weak demand from the developed economies is uh, always a bad signal for Korean exports. Uh, well, we, we, we can see from the second quarter numbers that while exports fell, uh, rather consumption and fiscal spending grew uh, a lot. And while well, fiscal spending grew 3.9% in uh, quarter two, and South Korea plans to spend a record uh, 604.4 trillion won, which is around 518.4 uh, US dollars uh, next year. And that's without the supplementary budgets. Um, uh, in those numbers and well that would be also 8.3% more than this year's budget which was already quite uh, big well compared to four years ago it seems that welfare budget is up by 50% so we're seeing uh, a huge increase in uh, fiscal expenditure and what do you make of this aggressive spending plan do you think the country's maybe going a bit um, beyond itself? It's, is it going getting ahead of itself? Or uh, do you think that this increased spending is necessary for recovery? Well, I think it's, it's important to distinguish two different types of spending. One uh, is uh, to recover from the, the pandemic. And second one is the general government spending. The first one is necessary for the recovery from the pandemic. It's inevitable. However, um, uh, regarding the second one, I have two concerns. Um, First one is that um, we should carefully examine uh, whether the current relief fund money is going where it needs the most to those who are uh, hit hardest by the pandemic. Uh, you know that some restaurants and industries are doing much better um, under the pandemic, ironically, and they don't need any uh, relief fund. They don't need uh, government money. And we should, um, in that sense, remove any political concerns and favors in designing the optimal um, spending policy. And regarding the second one, um, the welfare spending has been increasing even before the pandemic. And the fiscal deficit and government debt uh, is increasing at an unprecedented speed. It seems to me that uh, the government uses the pandemic as an excuse to raise um, unnecessary welfare spending, which uh, may not directly help the recovery from the economy. Uh, or, you know, uh, help those who are suffering from the pandemic. So it's, it's worrisome that um, the spending uh, is going up too, too much and too fast. 
Um, well, there has been some concern uh, over the government expanding its supplementary budget uh, six times since 2020, uh, which has really fueled quite a lot of worries about the size of the national debt as well. And many are actually questioning why there seems to be a budgetary expansion at a time when the Bank of Korea is actually intending to raise its interest rates to really clamp down on uh, soaring household debt levels as well. Mm. Are we seeing a contradiction here between monetary and fiscal policy? Yes, um, generally it is desirable that monetary and fiscal policies move together, especially for the recovery of the economy. However, uh, the main objective of current uh, tight monetary policy is, in my opinion, not for economic, economic recovery, but for so-called financial stability. Uh, as we all know that housing price has dramatically increased during the pandemic and increased liquidity in the financial market also created a huge boom in stock market as well. Therefore, uh, tight monetary policy was implemented to calm down the asset market and housing market and potential inflation in the economy. On the other hand, um, fiscal policy has been, as I mentioned, uh, expansionary throughout the current administration for the past four years. Uh, government uh, spent too much money on welfare and job creation in the public sector, which uh, seems to be failed, um, in my opinion. And some people argue that the current uh, level of fiscal debt is sustainable. Uh, however, uh, the, the more important thing is the speed of increasing government debt, which is among the highest in the world right now. And this trend uh, seems to continue for a while, which can be uh, dangerous in the near future. Government um, should not leave huge fiscal burden to our uh, children just because they want to and can spend. Right, and the uh, debt to GDP ratio is expected to top 50% soon, which is uh, very high, of course, um, especially for Korea. And while well, the government, as you said, has been uh, spending more and more on public programs, public job programs, um, in what it calls its uh, human centered uh, growth policy, it recently introduced a third pillar to the uh, Korean New Deal, which is the human New Deal. And that the government uh, plans to spend 31.3 trillion won for the early recovery of jobs, which includes creating over 1 million jobs in the public sector. And uh, it also will invest in digital infrastructure, R&D and a high tech workforce um, on top of that to grow a, a talented pool of um, IT experts or something like that. But will this top down approach really help uh, resolve the issue here? Uh, what initiatives do you personally hope to see in order to foster a so-called human centered growth? Um, uh, to tell the truth, I, I do not like the term, you know, human centered growth. It's, it's hard to understand the concept behind it. Anyway, um, typical economists believe that, you know, growth should come from the private sector, not from the government. Um, it's, it's always hard for government to create desirable and sound jobs. They can create um, uh, temporary uh, unproductive jobs in the public sector, but that's it. Uh, we cannot rely on that for increasing productivity or the growth rate of the economy. I uh, would rather uh, see you know, spending money um, as incentives to private companies who can create jobs, real jobs. Uh, government uh, should not be a player in the game. They should work as a referee to keep the players to play a fair game or check whether the ground um, is in good condition for players. Uh, one more uh, important task to boost up the productivity is uh, structural reforms in the public and private sectors, uh, which uh, should include removing all um, unnecessary regulations in many areas in the economy, including the labor market and, and the housing market, in my opinion. So I really hope we hope to see the structural reforms that you mentioned, which will which would sustain growth into the future and not just uh, one off injections into the economy of uh, exactly. just sheer capital. But well, given the time, um, this is where we have to uh, end the interview, I'm afraid. But that was Hong and Henry Kim, Dean and Professor of Economics at Songgung University. So thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. And to our viewers, as always, thank you very much for watching.